Hi, I welcome you again to this series of tutorials. In this part, we will study formatted inputs. Remember that in our last part, we had studied single character inputs, which included six functions. Uh, those were let's see, let's see, and let's care. In this part, we will study formatted input, like printf, which is formatted printing. We will take formatted input. So I have de declared some variables for our use: a string, integer, character, float, a long, or you can say long integer, unsigned long integer, and double. I have initialized two of them, and rest I have left uninitialized. You may not be familiar with this. This is an array of characters, actually. But eventually, you will become familiar when we will deal with strings. So now, you should know that this is the name and these many characters it contains. So, 1024. Since the last character is null or backslash 0, we can take up to 1023. Printf and scanf are similar, a lot similar. Like we have format specifier in printf, we have same in scanf, d, c, f, all preceded by a percentage. Similarly, we have the variable names. The only difference, perhaps, which you can notice very clearly is there is ampersand operator right in printf we do not have that ampersand operator you see i c and f are the variable names while when you apply ampersand operator or address of operator it gives the address of that name it is necessary because printf reads the value while scan of writes to that memory location to write to a memory location, knowing the address is mandatory. While reading from it, you just need to know the name and you can read it. We will see more of this ampersand operator when we will study pointers. For now, remember that for scanf, you need to give ampersand. So we have scanned integer with D, character with C, float with F, long with LD, unsigned long with LU, double with LF, and we have printed them. So let us build and run this. Okay. The first is an integer. Okay, by the way, you see there is a space here, right? This space is to consume backslash and the problem which we saw in our last single character input. This is a residual input which comes in. For character we say L, for float we say L.34. For uh, long, let's input a negative number. For unsigned long, give a big number. Float, I give a number which is random. You see the values are printed. Nothing magical over here, very simple, easy to use. And we print this. Okay. So now we comment this out. And okay. And star here. Okay, right. Now we have taken two inputs in the same line, like printf. And we can do this very well, nothing complex. We do percentage D, percentage C separated by a space. So I say this space F. So that will be printed easy. Now you may want to do hexadecimal and octal. Uh, Input so that is also same percentage x percentage o 
Note that since I have used L and O only works with integer pointers, I need to cast it to an integer pointer. So let's run this. And we have x. So for x, we need to give 0x. Let's say we give 25. So this will be 37. And for O, we give 73. So this will be 59. So 37 and 59. Note that we have taken input in hexadecimal and octal, but we are printing in decimal format. That is why there is a change in value. Strings are curious case. I'll tell you why. For normal plain variables, we have ampersand, but for strings, we will pass str, not ampersand str, because in arrays, the name signifies the base address. So we don't say ampersand str. Let's try to sum this. And in the string, I can input more than one. So string is printed. Let's run it again. Test by test. Ooh, ooh. So we're getting only test. Why did the second test go? Well, the default behavior of scanf is not to include white space in the input. And let's say we want to change that. So what do we do? We say printf, sorry, scanf, till you hit a new line, that is enter. And I want you to scan everything till new line. So, okay. Which may be the typical case of your input. So that is printed, easy. What if I want to filter the input and I want only capital letters, right? So I write kind of regular expression. It is a very limited regular expression. Capital A to capital Z. I want only capital A to capital Z. And once scanf will hit non-capital input, it will stop. So, well, good enough. Let us give more capital input. Now let's enter an integer. Now it won't take the integer. It will stop there. So I enter this. Let's enter a symbol. After space. Let's say. It won't take even space. One more run. So this, and then I say small. Now it won't take even small. Now let's further extend this. I want small characters also, and space, and period, like in English sentences. So you see, capital A to capital Z, small A to small Z, space and dot. So I type this. And then I type in capital and then I say dot. Okay, we got it. So let's do one more run. So I say number space dot this space capital. Now I'll input a number six. Oh, we didn't get six. Well, it was. So I have written a simple regular expression uh, over here. which will allow you to filter on the basis of your requirements, right? You have got all the letters and digits and the keyboard symbol. Note that how percentage should be written as percentage percentage and there should be a space if you want that. So that's how we That's how we can take all keyboard inputs and this is my entire range for string input, right? So we will stop here for this uh, part in which we have studied formatted input. If you want to run this, let's do a sample run, okay? Let's do a sample run. Okay. And then you hit small. And let's try symbols and other things. Okay, we have not included space, I think. Have we? Let me fix this. 
can you include space right at the beginning right. period we have I think now okay. let's try this okay so we got this now try more We got what we wanted. So this is your base string using which you can use to scan anything. This is where we will stop and in the next section we will proceed with functions. Thanks, happy coding.